Hey guys, it's me, Rx Codes, and somebody suggested that I make a review on Hyperpad. So, in this video, I'm going to be doing just that. But before I get started, I want to give a huge shout out to 10 Studios and Creeper Kingdom Stars, the first ever members to join my channel. If you want to support me, link will be in the description. This is my first time making a review video like this, so this might not be the most interesting or entertaining video on my channel, but it will be one of the most helpful videos that will help you decide if you want to buy Hyperpad or not. Of course, I'm going to be a little bit biased towards Hyperpad since I actually work for them, but please use your own judgment to determine if this app is right for you. So let's get into it baby! Woo! Once you have the app, it's really easy to get started. When you launch the app, you are greeted with this cool little login screen. You can choose to log in, skip, or you can register if you don't have an account. You don't need an account to start making projects, but if you plan on submitting them online or exporting them to the app store, then you obviously need an account. It's completely free to register for an account, and you don't have to worry about paying any royalties or paying any in-app purchases for Hyperpad. Once you bought Hyperpad, you unlocked everything including exporting to the App Store. And by exporting to the App Store, I mean compiling an Xcode project file that you would need to export to the App Store. Of course, exporting to the App Store is outside Hyperpad's domain. It is out of their control. The Apple Developer Program costs $99 per year as I'm speaking right now. And all exported apps must follow Apple's guidelines or they will not be accepted. Hyperpad will not be responsible for your apps once you submit them to the App Store, they are out of the loop. Alright, once you are logged in, this is what you see. A projects page where you can see your projects, the hub where you can see cool things that other people have made, a forums where you can post questions, get answers, have discussions, etc. And there is a help section where all the written documentation of everything will be including technical stuff like creating AI for an enemy, making a multiplayer game, using analytics, and more. And yes, you can do all of those things in Hyperpad. And there's more, which I will cover later on. It's honestly amazing. Creating a project is straightforward. You click on this new project button and go over through the project details before you dive into the editor. And of course, you can change any of these settings anytime after you created your project. Once you created a project, you'll be put right into the editor. You start with an empty scene where you can place your objects and manipulate them. And of course, there are options to use a demo project and you can branch or download other users' projects to use it as your own, but I'm just going to be starting from scratch for this review. If you press this icon, you will see all the assets you have in your project. In a new project, you will be given a folder filled with all the default UI assets like the buttons, fonts, health bar, joystick, and lives indicator. Of course, you can import your own assets too, and it's pretty straightforward. Click on the import button, select what you want to import, and select the things that you want to import, and press OK. Oh my gosh, I said import so many times. Whatever. Cool! Now I have some assets. You can select them and drag them into the scene, and it creates an object for you. If you want to manually create an object, you press on this flask icon and select whatever you want to place onto the scene. Uh, yes, I will get into that. Hold on. It's literally just ad banners. Yeah, you can earn revenue from your games. Dang, I, I really wanted to keep that a surprise, but oh well. So, you have your objects in your scene. You tap on an object and change its properties. I'm going to be glancing over a lot of things in this video, but I will show you what you can do in Hyperpad. Hyperpad is known for being the easiest game creating app that you can use, if not one of the easiest apps to use for making games on iOS. We've been featured in numerous articles, we have seen some awesome influencers in our platform using this app to make a huge positive impact, we have teachers all over the world use this app to teach students about coding and they really love it. So I'm going to show you how easy it really is to make a simple little game. Physics is built in, and you can enable it by clicking the ship icon in an object that you want to enable physics in. And boom! An object that reacts to physics. The objects below it are wall objects, which are just physical objects that are locked in place. You've probably noticed that there are a lot of other things in the editor, so I'm just going to go through all of them briefly. On the left sidebar, you can press this icon to go into panning mode, so you can move your camera around in the scene without accidentally selecting an object. 
There is also a select mode where you can select objects and there is a multi-selection tool where you can select multiple objects by dragging your finger over an area like so. You can also copy and paste objects and this icon is just for pasting the objects that you have copied. There is a toggle for showing the grid which is useful for snapping your objects in the right place and you can preview the different aspect ratios by pressing this icon. This would be useful for designing a game that is going to be supported on multiple devices. Now on the top, pressing this will bring up all of your scenes and overlays. FYI. You can have as many scenes and overlays as you want in your project. Pressing the scene icon will give you options to change your initial screen position, which is the screen outline, and pressing it on the background will allow you to change the background of your project. You can either use an image or a blank color. This play button, um, it's obvious, it just plays your project from whichever scene you're in. If you're playing normally, the first scene in your project will be launched first. And then you have the undo and redo buttons. This question mark icon launches the help page which is useful if you want a quick way to access documentation and tutorials within the editor. Editor? Editor. Oh my god. What the heck? <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I have a lot of speech impediments. Um, I'm gonna be cutting all of those out in the final edit. Hopefully. <laughs> Alright, moving on to the right sidebar. This is where your layers will show. And FYI, you can have as many layers as you want. You can create one by pressing this add button below. It will prompt a message to put in the name of the layer and boom, uh, just edit it. You can rearrange your layers by dragging them to where you want them to be. You can change the name of them or delete them by pressing this gear icon. You notice that the global and scene layers cannot be edited or deleted and that's because they are important. Every game uses these layers one way or another. Things like your health bar, joystick, and GUI stuff that you want to stay static on the screen will either be in the global or scene layer. The global layer will be the same for all of your scenes, whereas the scene layer is specific to your scene. These layers below are just normal layers where you can put your objects in. Not only is it useful for organization, objects from one layer don't interact with objects in another layer, so you can have each layer have their own physics simulation. Noise. Now, you can select an object and this menu will pop up. You can change the color of the object, change the blending mode, rotate, scale, and do other transformations on your object. You can go to this tab and specify precisely the position, scale, rotation, and numerous other properties of your objects. You can store attributes of an object, which is more of a technical feature, uh, useful for things like storing health of enemies. You can also add tags to the object, which allows you to manipulate multiple objects at once in your code. Hehehe. <laughs> now here's the cool part that many of you are probably waiting for. The coding aspect. So how do you make stuff happen in your scene and how dynamic can it be? Now the coding in Hyperpad is called the behavior system. Um, the behavior system is straightforward. Everything is made out of blocks called behaviors. Duh. Kinda like in Scratch. Um, unlike Scratch though, there is a lot more things that you can do in here. It's honestly insane and impressive. I'm going to glance over the behavior system but you have event behaviors and you have action behaviors. Event behaviors trigger other behaviors on a specific event, like when I started touching this object or when an object collides with another object. And there are action behaviors that does something when triggered, like adding to a score or playing a sound effect. The icons denoted under each behavior tells you how it will trigger other behaviors under it. Lightning means that it will trigger under a specific event. Blank means that it will just trigger immediately. Clock means that it will trigger after a delay or on completion. And the heartbeat icon means that it will trigger repeatedly on event. If you leave an action behavior with nothing on the top, then it will be triggered when the scene starts. Now, in each of these behaviors, you can change properties from them. Like for the alert behavior, I can change the title, description, the cancel button, and more. And this is what it looks like. Now, you probably have noticed that there are these green circles that show on some behaviors when a behavior is selected. These are output fields. The output fields store the result from the behavior it came from. So if I wanted to add two numbers together and show the result in an alert behavior, I can do that. Remember what I said about tags earlier? Let me show you here. 
on behaviors that manipulate objects, you have the option to use tags. So for example, what if I wanted to move a bunch of objects? I could use the move by or move the object behavior. I'm just going to use move by because why not? Um, you select this and select whatever tag you want to use. Now the cool thing about tags is that it will work for every single object within that tag. So what this behavior is doing is moving every single object that has this tag. Alright, if the behavior system wasn't crazy enough, well, uh, be prepared. You can make real-time multiplayer games with Socket.io. You can use APIs in your projects using HTTPS requests. You can import dynamic images during runtime using the load image behavior. You can track usage throughout your project using analytics. You can monetize your games using ads and earn money from them. And yes, you can trigger ads like this. And you can reward your players. You can create your own sounds and particle effects. You can draw on a virtual canvas. You can generate random numbers and produce random events. You can play music. Um, because a game is probably boring without music. You can use AUF credentials for authentication. AUF, AUF, whatever. You can open URLs. You can save and load data in your games. You can use arrays and dictionaries that support the JavaScript object notation format. You can dynamically change collisions of an object. You can shoot bullets. You can have countdowns. You can spawn and destroy objects in runtime. You can track time and create your very own home screen demo like this. You can import and play animations. You can use sprite sheets. You can use various different tweens and transitions. You can <laughs> manipulate time. Are you serious? And I'm not done. You can change variables on the fly. You can broadcast and receive events across objects. You can change the physical properties of an object during runtime. You can use if statements. You can make your own loading screens. You can use Dropbox to import your assets. You can export your game state apps to oi. Did I already say that? Dang, how many features are there? Well, anyways, after all of that, your projects will run 60 frames per second. Silky smooth. Let's talk performance. How many objects can Hyperbed handle? How smooth does it run? How long does it take to load a huge project? Well, let's find out. Now, this will vary depending on the hardware you use. I'm using the iPad Air 4 if you're wondering. I had this iPad for 3 years now, it can barely run PUBG now. <laughs> Hey, this iPad's still usable, it's it's still really good. But anyways, Hyperbad can handle over a thousand physics objects in a scene without breaking a sweat. Depending on how you optimize your scene, Hyperbad can handle thousands and thousands of objects and still remain 60 frames per second. This project took a couple seconds to load. Now, here is what a lot of people complain about. If you wanted your behaviors to execute on every frame, Hyperbad can stutter a little bit. Hyperpad isn't meant to do this, but you can still make it run behaviors 60 times a second. It's just that on each frame, sometimes the behaviors are executed first before the frame is rendered, so it does look a little weird. Well, yeah, Hyperpad isn't optimized for this. What you expect? Yeah, I understand why people complain about this. It, it makes sense if you came from a coding background. So later on, hopefully Hyperpad will have a behavior just for this specific purpose. How does Hyperpad handle high definition images on the screen? I have some very large images on the screen, as you can see, and it does start to lag a little when you're rendering a bunch of huge images on your screen. Makes sense. But Hyperpad assumes that you compressed your assets and your assets are as small as can be, like in all of those asset packs where the smallest graphics are 100 by 100 pixels. So in this game that I've made, you can see that there are hundreds and hundreds of blocks everywhere. But Hyperpad is running 60 frames per second because all of those blocks are just 16 by 16 pixels. But yeah, I optimized my project as much as I could and it runs pretty well. So it really depends on how you handle your assets and how you use them in your scene. So in general, make sure that your assets are as small as they can be. All right. That is everything good there is to say about Hyperpad. Now, here are the downsides as of version 1.29. In the future, I'm pretty sure that a lot of these are going to be fixed, so just be aware that what I'm going to say might be outdated. There is no undo or redo function in the behaviors. So if you made a rookie mistake of cutting off a behavior for some reason and you can't find where you cut it from, then there's no way to undo that. You have to manually find the behavior that you cut it from. There is no native support for child objects, but you can make your own system if you really wanted to. Whenever you want to import a project or any asset from another app, Hyperpad will first need to be loaded. It's a minor caveat, but it can be annoying. 
there isn't a native way to port objects from one scene to another. So if you wanted to do the same thing across multiple projects, unfortunately, you will have to start from scratch each time. And Hyperpad has a very small team of developers, and you're probably thinking, what's wrong with that? Well, Hyperpad doesn't update often. Um, nowadays, we only get one or two updates per year with new features and bug fixes. And since there aren't many developers working for Hyperpad right now, bugs are prone to happen. There's just so many combinations of behaviors and scenarios that can happen, so bug tracking can be difficult. Especially when there's no native debugging system or crash report that you'll be able to access. Yeah, um, that's all the cons right there. So that's everything you need to know about Hyperpad. Have you made your decision yet? We do have a Discord server if you want to chat with us about it. Um, the developers are there too. In my opinion, I would say Hyperpad is perfect for non-technical people and it's great for starters who just want to learn how to make games or they just want to make their own cool projects on the go. Hyperpad is jam-packed with so many features and most of them are made very easy to use. Hyperpad will also be great for those who have prior experience in programming stuff. It's a great tool for creating front-end applications, not just for games and interactive bugs. Despite some of the downsides I mentioned, I think Hyperpad is great for those who just want to make their own game or want to make something on the go. Though you do have to think like a programmer and I know everyone doesn't have that technical ability, but when you're using Hyperpad, you will be able to develop this ability over time along with a bunch of other industry-leading skills like following the steps of the engineering process or using STEM skills. If you've been using Hyperpad for a while, you know that Hyperpad can improve your cognitive skills. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little review. Not a tutorial, don't get it confused RX, it's, it's a review, <laughs> it's a review. So um, maybe I'll see you later. Bye! A specific event, like when I started touching these objects or when an object collides with another object. Oh my god, I just dooted myself. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> Bro, I gotta go change. <laughs> You're a queen. Bye.